Okay, we open up your Bibles to Job chapter 24. All right, let's battle prayer before we start. Holy Father, thank you for this time for prayer. And, and the, as the word goes forth, bless all those listening, Father, that we may grow in grace and knowledge as we take in the word. We serve and worship you in our spirit, Father. We thank you, Father, that as the Bible says, the true worshipers shall worship me in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Father, as the word goes out. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, Job 24. Why seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty? Do they that know him not see his days? Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof. They drive away the donkey of the fatherless. They take away the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth hide themselves together. Behold, as a wild donkey in the desert, go they forth to, to do their work, rising betimes for a prey. The wilderness yieldeth food for them and, and for their children. They reap everyone his corn in the field, and they gather the vintage of the wicked. They cause the naked to lodge without clothing that they have no covering in the cold. They are wet with the showers of the mountains and embrace the rock for want of shelter. They pluck the fatherless from the breast and take a pledge of the poor. They cause him to go naked without clothing and they take away the sheep from the hungry, which make oil within their walls and tread their wine presses and suffer thirst. Men groan from out of the city, and the soul of the wounded crieth out. Yet God layeth not folly to them. They are of those that rebel against the light. They know not the ways thereof, nor abide in the paths thereof. The murderer rising with the light killeth the poor and needy, and in the night as a thief. The eye also of the adulterer waiteth for the twilight, saying, uh, no eye shall see me, and disguiseth his face. In the dark they dig through houses which they had marked for themselves. In the daytime they know not the light, for the morning is to them evening, even and as the shadow of death. As one know that, as one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. He is swift as the waters. Their portion is cursed in the earth. He beholdeth not the way of the vineyards. Trout and heat consume the snow waters. So does the grave those which have sinned. The womb shall forget him. The worm shall feed sweetly on him. He shall be no more remembered. And wickedness shall be broken as a tree. He evil entreateth the barren that beareth not, and doeth not good to the widow. He draweth also the mighty with his power. He riseth up, and no man is sure of life, though it be given him to be in safety, whereon he resteth, yet his eyes are upon their ways. They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low. They are taken out of the way as all other, and cut off as the tops of the ears of, of corn, and it be not so, uh, so, and if it be not so now, who will make me a liar and make my speech nothing worth? Okay, um, let's go back over to Revelation now. Cool. Chapter sixteen. All right, we come up to verse uh, 11. Okay, and it says, and blasphemed 
the God, uh, the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. All right. So um, these are the people that God uh, has poured out his wrath uh, upon. Um, as it says in 10, the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast. Uh, those in Satan's dominion takes in the false church, see? Now, when it says blaspheme the God of heaven, um, uh, that means to speak evil of, disrespectful, see? Go to 2 uh, Peter 2. It talks about false prophets. Uh, look at verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you, who privily bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Say. So uh, they're teaching uh, false gospels, false doctrine. Uh, and and uh, look at verse uh, 10. It's a 210, but chiefly them, them would be the false church, these false prophets, these false teachers, chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity, see, uh, blasphemy, to speak evil of. And so when they uh, have a false gospel or doctrine, they're saying this verse teaches that and, and this and that, and they're speaking evil of that. Uh, and when it's, it's not teaching that, and see, this is how false prophets, uh, they take a verse in the Bible and verses, and, and they don't teach it correctly, right? They divide the word. Look at verse um, 12 there. But these, the same, the false prophets, the false church, as natural brute beast made to be taken and destroyed, uh, speak evil, say, uh, blasphemy means to speak evil of, to speak evil of the things they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, say. So you get people that don't believe in predestination, for example, and they take other verses and they're really speaking evil of what those other verses are teaching because they're not teaching them correctly. So they speak evil of the things, uh, uh, the, the, the true gospel, say the things, the word of God, the things that they understand not, say. And, uh, and that's just the way it is uh, when you have somebody in a, in a false doctrine, false uh, gospel. They're not going to take these verses and, and teach them correctly. And so uh, what it says, it's they're really blaspheming uh, and uh, they're speaking evil, see? They're speaking evil of, 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 the, of the word of God when it's not teaching that, see? So sound doctrine, doctrine uh, of course, God's elect, God's sheep, uh, rightly divides the word, say. And even, go to Titus, it even says, um, go to Titus there. Look at, look at, uh, before he, Philemon Hebrews, before we get Titus, look at, um, see how it starts out there? Uh, and let's see look at verse 1 Paul a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness see? the Bible teaches election it teaches predestination see? it's saying it right there Paul preached election and, and, and predestination 
and uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, see, opens up our understanding to those doctrines. And there, and so he writes it here, uh, according to the truth, or uh, uh, Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. And then look at uh, chapter two, verse one. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. See? And, and so the church, the sheep, we speak forth sound doctrine. See? False church, false prophets, they don't speak forth sound doctrine. See? And that's why um, he says in, in chapter 1, look at verse 15 and 16. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them, you see, that would be uh, those that are not saved, the false prophets, unto them that are def <coughs> but to them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled, see. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work, reprobate, okay? And so, um, and, uh, and so anyway, go back to Revelation. And, and so uh, here in 10, uh, 11, there it says, and blaspheme uh, the God of heaven, okay? So they speak evil of uh, the word of God. Uh, they speak evil of Christ. And um, and so uh, this is this is how you'd understand that. But, you know, remember in 13, go to Revelation 13. Remember verse 6? And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. See? So you could see he's speaking evil of the name of Christ, uh, the kingdom of God, the tabernacle, and the church, them that dwell in heaven, God's elect, that hold to the, the gospel, the true gospel. So, all right, so go back to 1611 and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains, their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Okay, so uh, it's not literal pains and sores. It, spiritually, these pains and sores, uh, and we could say there's deeds, are all sin. They're all a picture of sin, pains, sores, and deeds, all sins, okay? Now go to um, Isaiah chapter 1. Look at verse 4 through 6. Isaiah 1, 4 through 6. A uh, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a sin, a seed of evil doers. Oh, this would take, and that language takes in the false church, those unsaved, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger because they blaspheme the name of the Lord, as it says. They are gone away backward. See? Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole uh, heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. Now listen to this language. But wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. See? So what's from the head to the foot? Sin. That's what how you'd understand uh, spiritually wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. 
they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mobilified with ointment. See? So they're, they're open, their sins are open. If your sins are, if your sores and wounds are healed, then, then that means your sins have been uh, healed up. See? But here they're open. But notice the language, wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. And so it says they blasphemed the, the God of heaven uh, because of their sores. And, and, uh, and, and, and so uh, people do that they, because they're in their sins and, and uh, uh, in darkness, say, the, that's that's the nature of unsaved man. They're in uh, they're spiritually dead, spiritually sick, spiritually uh, covered with sores and wounds. All right. Now, if you go to uh, Deuteronomy, it says, if you don't listen to the words of the Lord, uh, all these things. Uh, you ever read Deuteronomy 28? All kinds of things come upon unsaved. Uh, look at verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commend thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And you read uh you read uh 28 um almost uh the whole chapter uh but it, it talks about all these curses but look at um uh, look at that verse in deuteronomy 28 uh look at the verse um 27 there the lord will smite thee with the botch of egypt and with emeroids, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. Uh, sores, see, wounds and sores. And so, um, uh, there's a. Uh, this is this is the 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 justice of God uh, when these things come upon us. God's a just God, and and so. Um, you read through these things and you see that uh, God's judgment and the wrath upon mankind. So, all right. So we see that uh, um, sores are a picture. Uh, there's a little book, uh, Nahum. Uh, uh, it's, it's in there with Daniel. See if you could find it. It's, it's uh, Nahum. There's Jonah, Micah, uh, right after Micah, okay, you have Nahum. And then if you look at uh, 319, uh, it says, there is no healing of thy bruise, say, uh, thy wound is grievous. So you should know now that the bruise is sin, the, the wound is sin. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. For upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually. Okay. So wound, bruise is sin. And so um, go back to... Uh, Revelation, you could see now in, in 11, and blaspheme uh, the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. Okay. So spiritually, you know, it's their sins. Okay. And then uh, repented not of their deeds. So you see how it goes. You don't, uh, you, you don't look at this physical pains and physical sores this is you repent of sin say you when you repent 
you repent of your sins. So the pains and sores uh, are sins and the deeds are sins. And that's why it says and repented not of their deeds. And, and so um, that's that's sin. OK, now, in order to repent, God has to go, go to um, two verses in Acts. Uh, God has to grant us repentance. Look at, I'm going to just show you two verses, Acts 5, uh, 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give uh, repentance, say, to Israel. So Israel would be Israel according to the promise. And we already uh, worked with Israel. There's Israel according to the flesh. There's Israel according to the promise. Say. And 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 forgiveness of sins. Say. And that's why uh, it's it goes right with it to give repentance. Say to grant repentance. And then it, right in there is forgiveness of sins. Say. So we're right on track when it says. Uh, and repented not of their deeds. That would be their sins. Go to Acts 11. Look at verse 11. Uh, Acts 11. And then uh, verse 18. And when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified. God saying, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted, that's the same word give, over in Acts 5.31, granted repentance unto life. See? So God has to give us repentance. He has to grant it. See? So uh, all of God's elect will be granted repentance. Okay? The ones that are in the book of life. Otherwise, uh, they're good. They rip. They don't repent. Say so. Here in eleven, uh, blaspheme the God. In other words, they spoke evil of of sound doctrine of the gospel of heaven. Because why? Because of their sins, their pains, and their sores. Say your sin uh, will. Um, uh, you will uh, Bible list false witness, you know, as a sin. That's one of the sins when it says out of the heart of man become uh, comes this, this and the other thing and, and false witnesses. Thing. So uh, the heart is desperately wicked. It says uh, go to Jeremiah or it says that 17. Look at verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And this is uh this is the um uh, uh this is why it says that God has to put a new heart in us, say. And uh, that's salvation. So this is the nature of man, see? And uh uh, desperately wicked. But when you go to Ezekiel 36, uh, this this would be somebody that's been saved, born, born of God. Look at Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you. See? So that, that wicked heart he takes away. Uh, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away that stony heart. See, that would be that wicked heart and uh, out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. See? And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. The Holy Spirit is in us. See, this, this, these are all God's sheep. These are all God's elect that are have uh, that have become 
born of God when he gives us the Holy Spirit. See, it's spiritual language. You, when you see these, read this, a new heart, that would, that would be uh, the heart of God. That would be the spirit of God, see, that comes into us. And because of that, the Bible says we're a new creature, see. Old things, we're not that, we don't walk in the, uh, the old ways, see. And uh, uh, we're walking in, in Christ. And of course, we're going to sin, and yet God will correct his his sheep and and uh, and cause us, as it says in 27, put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And so uh, God watches over his his children, his elect, and uh, and uh, keeps us uh, uh, in the fold. Otherwise, uh, he'll chastise us and correct us so uh now um in verse now so we have that um that verse covered and then uh we'll go to verse 12 it says and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the Eth East might be prepared. All right. So um, again, uh, in the Great Tribulation, you see, uh, you have to understand that the gospel is silenced. Uh, we have a lot of different language uh, here. It says the river was dried up. So uh, we we would think that the Euphrates River would be a pitcher of the word of God, which it is, the gospel, say. So the great river, uh, go to Genesis. If you look at uh, this great river, you know, it, it was one of the rivers that came out of the garden. And and those rivers were a picture of the, the gospel going into all the earth. And of course, there would be four rivers that takes in uh, the the whole earth. God uses the number four. So if you read number, uh, chapter two, look at verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became and became into four heads. See. So it it takes in the whole earth. So, and then it names the different rivers. And then if you go down to, let's say, verse 14, the name of the third river, Hidikal, uh, or Hidikal, and that is, that is it which goeth toward the um, east of Assyria. And then it says the fourth river is the Euphrates. You see. Okay, so you have these you have these rivers here, all pictures of the gospel. Okay, and uh, so uh, Euphrates would be a picture of the word of God. So if it's go back, if it's dried up, say that means the gospel is is silenced. If it's dried up. So 12 says, and back in Revelation 16, 12, uh, the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. So, okay, so again, this is part of the great tribulation where the gospel silenced, okay, in this language, dried up. The water's dried up, so the, the the word of God or the gospel is silenced. Go to Joel. Uh, if you go to Joel right there with uh, Daniel, Hosea. All right. Uh, look at Look at Joel. All right, I want to go to chapter one. 
Okay, you could see the gospel silenced in this language. Look at verse six. For a nation has come up upon my land. This would be Satan's nation, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he had the cheek teeth of a great lion. He, that would be the devil, hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. See, he's, he's destructive. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the Lord's ministers, mourn. The field is wasted. The land mourneth, for the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languisheth. This is language of the gospel being silenced, say. Uh, the new wine is dried up, the oil. All this language takes in the gospel being silenced. Be ashamed, O you husbandmen. How, O you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Why? Because a nation has come up upon my land, verse 6. And this takes in the great tribulation period, where the false church, uh, these are under the power of Satan. And because of that, uh, the, the wine is going to be dried up uh, and, and the, no fruit on the, as it says, on the trees, say. And this is the corruption that that the devil does when he takes his seat in the churches, say. Uh, uh, this is how he works. And the next thing, the, the, the new wine is dried up and all these things, say. And just like in Revelation uh, 16, verse 12, the, the great water Euphrates, uh, the waters thereof was dried up. So you put that those verses uh, underlined dried up in Revelation 16, 12, and you put Joel 1, 6 through 12 there, because it uses the same language, dried up. And, and if you understand, you know, it's Satan's work. It's, it's, time of, it's the time of great tribulation. You'll see how these verse, verses... Uh, Point to the great tribulation, say. And this is a time uh, that it's brought out here in Revelation 16. And so this is right up near the end. Jesus says there'll be a great tribulation, say. It's a one time event. And he even says false Christs and false prophets are going to rise, show great signs and wonders. And so uh, not everybody is going to see these things. Uh, remember, uh, Noah's day, uh, they didn't listen to Noah. Uh, only eight were on the ark. Everybody outside perished. Uh, remember the, in the days of Lot, um, only Lot and his two daughters made it out. And everybody perished in Sodom and Gomorrah. Not many people are going to see these things. But if the, those that see them, God has given us, uh, you know, understanding of the mystery of Babylon the Great. See? And so uh, it's of the Lord, see. He's the one that gives us spiritual understanding of these things. And so, um, so it says here, and the sixth angel poured out his vial in verse 12 upon the great river Euphrates, see. And that's part of the, uh, the tribulation and the, the water there was dried up, okay? So you have the, the gospel being silenced. All right, then it says that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. All right, so we know that these, these kings of the east, of course, would be Satan and his army, 
Satan and his kings, say, uh, kings of the east. So uh, let's see how God uses east. Go to um, Exodus uh, chapter 10. Look at 13 through 15 there. Remember God's judgments upon Egypt? Um, look at chapter 10. Okay, I'm going to read 13 through 15. And Moses stretched forth his, his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land. Kings of the east, east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. Okay, now you know, uh, spiritually, locust is a picture of false prophets. Okay, and, and look what the, these locusts do. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them, there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall, shall be such. Similar to the false prophets, say, in the, in the Great Tribulation, okay? And uh, and so it, it says they covered the face of the whole earth. So you, could, you can get some insight on what you expect the false church uh, to be similar, say. And verse 15, they covered they, the locusts, spiritually, you could, it's the false church, the false prophets. They covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened, see? And this is uh, because they're in darkness. They're under Satan's dominion. And and uh, uh, this, this is what happens when you have false prophets uh, covering the face of the whole earth. You, you would see that the gospel silenced or the land is darkened, see. Now, of course, uh, the true church is the opposite. The true church is light, but the false church is dark, see. And that's why during the Great Tribulation, these locusts would be a picture of the, what to expect uh, the false church to cover the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened and they did eat every herb of the land. Say, just like Joel says, uh, all the fruit was on the trees were gone. Uh, they did, they go forth to destroy and uh, the fruit of the trees, which the hail had left and remained not any green thing see, in the trees, nor any herbs in the field through all the land of Egypt, okay? And this is this is what to expect, see? And, uh, and so this is what you have here, the kings of the east. So go back to, go back to, um, um, well, let me read one more that goes with it. Go to Ezekiel 19. Look at verse 10 through 12 there. Ezekiel 19. 19, 10 through 12. Thy mother is like a vine in thy blood planted by the waters. She, she was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters was and she had strong rods for the, the scepters of them that bear rule and her stature was exalted among the thick branches she appeared in her height with the multitude of her branches but she was plucked say she's plucked up in fury she was cast down to the ground, and the east wind dried up her fruit. Her strong rods were broken and withered. Fire consumed them. See? 
and now she's planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty ground. <laughs> All right? And so you see how uh, what happens uh, during the time of great tribulation, you could use verse 12, she was plucked up, cast down. See, the false church, uh, the east wind dried up her fruit. And that's what happens when when uh, the churches start um, going after false gospels, uh, it's as uh, she's plucked up and and dried up. See, no more truth is is being brought forth. Say, so um, uh, the gospel is uh, dried up in the external church in the place of worship where the false church uh goes say that's where we understand where the gospel silenced say where satan has taken his seat say and so um remember remember this verse go to chapter 18 revelation remember verse uh, 23 the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee Babylon, the, that would be uh, the false external church that have gone away, uh, fallen from the faith. Uh, the, uh, those now have, uh, there's no fruit. It's dry, the gospel's dried up. That's why it says the voice of the bridegroom, Christ, and the voice of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. See, the is Babylon. It would be the place of worship, the churches. All right, go back to 16. So these kings of the east are pictures of false prophets. Say, they're pictures of those locusts back in Exodus. Because we already know that. Uh, we're not going to get into verse 13, but listen to 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. See? And so um, uh, we see that uh, these way, the ways of the kings of the east would be uh, pictures of unclean spirits, see? that they're going to come forth and, of course, uh, they're going to be used to uh, 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 attack Christ and his church and to blaspheme, say, as it says in Revelation 13, to blaspheme his name and, and uh, his temple and uh, tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven that uh, would be every one of God's elect. You know, when we get saved, the Bible says we sit in heavenly places. See, our spirit is what's saved, not our our fleshly bodies. It, it's our spirit that that uh, you have to understand. That spirit that is saved, that is what has eternal life. See, that's what we worship God in is in our spirit. See, uh, and and uh, we're here in our fleshly bodies to uh, bring forth the word of God, uh, the gospel, uh, to bring uh, God's elect into salvation. Uh, and yet uh, when these fleshly bodies die, our it's our spirit. Like he said, the thief on the cross, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Say. Is your spirit saved? That's the main thing. That it, Are you been born again? Uh, God deals and and uh, it's our spirit our souls we'll go over to first peter and then i'm going to sum it up go to first peter <clears throat> look at um look at first peter there chapter one verse nine receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls. 
say, that's what you and I have salvation. So the flesh turns to dust, but our spirit goes to be, if you've been born of God, goes to be with the Lord. So uh, our the salvation of your souls right there. And then uh, uh, look at verse 22 of chapter one. Seeing you have purified your souls. Uh, of course, the Lord purifies us uh, when we're washed in his blood uh, and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Okay. And then it goes on being born again. Not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Every one of God's elect are born again, are born of God. Okay? Every one of us. And so our spirit is resurrected. And that's why it says, blessed is he that have part in the first resurrection. Because before salvation, we're spiritually dead. And, and when we become saved, it says he has quickened us, so he's made us alive, and that's salvation. All right, let's sum it up, and then we'll be done. Go back to Revelation 16, uh, 11 and 12. Okay, and blaspheme the God of heaven, those in Satan's dominion, that's full of darkness. Uh, why do they blaspheme? Because of their sins, their pains, their sores their deeds because they didn't repent not of their deeds which would be sin okay and and that's what we repent of our sins that's so we're right on track about pains and sores spiritually sin and i gave you the verses and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river euphrates uh we've seen that's one of the rivers that uh, that went forth uh, into all the land, uh, which is the gospel going forth. But if it's dried up, see, the gospel silence during the great tribulation. And it says that the way of the kings of the east, these would be uh, Satan's church, false prophets, see. Uh, and I've, I showed you how the locust came from the east. This this would be the same picture, see, uh, and then uh, that the kings of the east might be prepared. And then it goes right into 13, which we'll cover next time. So, uh, Lord willing, uh, we'll pick it up in chapter 16 and then verse 13.